Welcome back to another incredible episode of the Rants and Gems Real Estate Podcast. My name is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, but better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is Kiana Watson, real estate broker extraordinaire, <laughs> license number 317576. I am excited about today's episode, Matt. Look, I'm excited. I'm excited to see you. We haven't seen you in a while, Kiana. You took Ooh. you took yesterday, last week off. You had Thanksgiving, the family. First of all, how was your turkey day with the family? It yeah. was incredible. Um, I won the Honor of the Year Award again. As, again? <laughs> as, as per <laughs> usual. You know, I, I had um, all my nieces and nephews here. We had a great meal. I took them out. So, you know, Dave and Busters went to the movies. Like we just did the family thing. It was, it was, it was great. My mom enjoyed it. And um, of course we played Monopoly. We need to talk about that. I haven't played Monopoly in so long, but Monopoly is real life. I think investors, Mon any investor needs to play a Monopoly first. Look, Monopoly is definitely real life when you live in it in real life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the game fun because now yeah. you're actually doing it as an adult which is incredible. We definitely need to have like a Monopoly game challenge or like like yeah. something. Like we definitely need to play a game of Monopoly and record that and see I who mean, comes out victorious. It, it really breaks down everything. I, 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 so we had a great time. It was incredible. How was your Thanksgiving? No, it was cool. Got time to um, spend time with the kids. Um, ate good. You know, it was Market Monday weekend here in New York. So, you know, besides Thanksgiving, I didn't really get to see my family because they all live out of state. Um, <clears throat> but for hopefully for Christmas I get to chop in with them. But the weekend was great, man. Got to see a lot of our, our close friends and business partners for Market Monday weekend. Had a private dinner at forty forty. Shout out to yeah. Duce. Shout out to Cam. That was incredible. And then obviously Market Mondays, I'm at Madison Square Garden was nothing short of spectacular. Floyd Mayweather killed it. Um Don Peoples killed it. The yeah. Einstein of Wall Street. Killed it. Is that the, I, that's his name? The Einstein Wall Street. I don't want to butcher. That's what his he name. calls himself. Like, yeah. I, I started following him on social just because I love his energy. No, he's incredible. He had the custom drip on too. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, he had a custom jacket on with with Ian Bashad and Troy's faces on the back. It was kind of official. I ain't gonna hold you up. Oh, okay. um, it I was dope. And then Jada Kiss performed and brought out Little C's. So the garden was rocking. Another sold out event. Shout out to Troy Bashad and Ian. Um, shout out to Ashley for always, you know, putting things together and making things um, dope, man. And the energy in the garden, man, just talking to the people, um, you know, got to see a lot of people who tapped in with rant Rants and Gems, too. That was dope. A lot of people talk about they purchased real estate in the last 12 months by just listening to our pod because that's always, you know, good to hear. So this weekend was good, man. I, 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 was, I was full. You know what I mean? Congratulations to the guys. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's great to hear. You was looking very dapper. At the 4040 event, 4040 oh, Club. Yeah, so that wasn't the 4040 event. Actually, that was um, Friday night. The guys got honored. Troy, Mike, and Rashad um, got honored by the town of Greenberg um, or Westchester County at a um, dinner, at a gala um, Friday mm -hmm. night. So when I threw on that shit um, Friday night with the green the green suit that matching the watch, you know, that I had to I had to put <laughs> put that shit on. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all need to go to his social media. They be forgetting, they don't be knowing, man. I'm a banker, man. So I am I'm, I'm used to being suited and booted. Don't let these hoodies and polos fool you. Like oh, I throw yeah. I throw on a suit when I need to throw on a suit, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You you yeah. showed up. You were show you showed up for the people. Yeah, I had to come well, correct, you know. No, nah, it was it was definitely it definitely was a dope vet. I didn't even post no pictures from 44. I got some pictures I gotta post. Um Tooks took some great shots. Shout out to Tooks. He took some great shots that weekend. So shout out to Tooks. He's always does mm -hmm. a great job with the photos, making all of us look good. Absolutely. So, I can't wait for the new shoot for Rants and Gems. Oh, yeah. You already told us off camera. Y'all see that look, y'all? <laughs> she was like, yo. She was like, you see this right here? You see this right here? I need this at the shoot. <laughs> yo, they got me into my model shit now, y'all. Listen. <laughs> Fucking with Kiana. MG. I need model MG at the Rants and Gems new promo. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with Kiana, man. I love it, though. I love it. <laughs> Look, so, yeah, today's episode is going to be dope. We got a lot to talk about, um, some great things in the news lately. But first, let's give a big shout. First of all, before we go to our shout out to our sponsors, thank all you guys for tapping in with Rants of Gems. Make sure you all download on audio, Spotify, uh, Apple, wherever you listen to. Download, leave a five-star review, leave a comment, and um, share it with 10 of your peoples. 
All right. Um, and follow Rants and Gems and Kiana and myself on all social media outlets. Links will be in the descriptions for everything I just mentioned. So let's shout out our partner Zillow. Shout out to Zillow. Shout out to the whole crew over there, Ty. So here we go. Ever catch yourself browsing Zillow at 3 a.m.? Same here. It's too easy. And you know what else is easy? Getting a new home on Zillow. With Zillow, you can take a closer look at homes that's been on the market with thousands of listings that have virtual tours, interactive floor plans. Compare your favorite homes side by side to see which ones has the features you want. Request a tour with a local agent to get on the ground insights about the neighborhood you like and learn about your financing options. And you can easily connect with a lender to get pre-qualified all on the Zillow app. All right. So make sure you guys download um, the Zillow app at Zillow.com. And again, you can talk to local realtors there. You can you can get pre-approved. A lot of people don't even know that Zillow does mortgages, but they do mortgages as well. So you can tap in with them for that. And it's a lot of data and information on the site as as a whole for you guys to make informative um, real estate home buying or investing decisions. So shout out to our partners and our sponsors over there at Zillow. We appreciate the love and the support. Absolutely. So let's get into this, man. Mortgage giants raise loan limits to a record level in 2023, Kiana. Right? So Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will raise the loan limits for government-backed loans to a record level for 2023 with the minimum limit hitting at least $1 million for high-cost areas. That's crazy. Home prices have still skyrocketed in the, in the um, past year. So bring up the chart, Tooks. Bring up the charts. Let's show the people the charts, right? Mm -hmm. um, but home prices have um, skyrocketed over the past year. It's up 12.2% in the third qu quarter compared to last quarter. And this is what prompted um, Fannie Mae, I mean, not Fannie Mae, the Federal Housing the FHFA to raise the, the loan limits. So yes. look at these loan limits right here. You see them on your screen, Kiana? Absolutely. And one thing I can say is I do feel like we need those increase in loan limits because everything is up. Y'all know it's up and it's stuck. Keep in mind that, you know, inflation, the price of living and the cost of homes have increased. So when I'm looking at the loan limits for the baseline for 2023, um, we're looking at single units and um, the contiguous United States and District of Columbia at 726,200. Then you also have for one unit, 1 million and 99, 1,089,300 for the Alaska, Guam, Hawaii, and U.S. Virgin Islands. And as you work your way down, as you see for the quads, which I think is really important for those that are looking to invest in multifamily housing, that is at 1.3 million dollars that is huge and, and that's necessary for the changes we're seeing not just in in housing throughout the united states i think this is a win for everybody yeah this is definitely a win for folks who don't live in high cost areas right so georgia is not considered a high cost area hell no. i remember it was four hundred and seventeen thousand for years before they even changed these loan limits. I mean, I think they had it at 417000 for a single family for like seven, eight years in a row. And then over the past three to four years, it's just been steadily increasing because home prices. And now in the state of Georgia, you know, a 700000 house used to be like a $1.5 million house, I think, five years ago in Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Now, literally, a, a seven hundred. $800,000 home is kind of like the baseline if you really want to get into a good area in Georgia, which is incredible. And this is what makes it easier. So now somebody looking to buy a $750,000, $780,000 um, house and they're using a conventional loan, they can put as little as 5% down and Absolutely. get a proof of financing. That's huge. And that changes the game for so many people so they don't have to pay the cash difference. You're saving more money on your out-of-pocket expenses. You're able to finance these properties. And that opens the door for people that want to go to these other districts and other areas for whatever reason they have. Some people want to be on the south side for whatever reason. Some people want to be on the north. Whatever happens, I just know that increasing these loan limits is going to help so many future homeowners because now you can have a little less out-of-pocket expenses. Although the prices are still higher. Absolutely. And like you said, with the multifamilies too. Now, these these numbers are, just so you guys understand, on the left-hand side of this column, you have the units, one, two, three, four, and you basically have the United States of America, 
right? D.C. and Puerto Rico, every state in the in, in this country, um, these are the loan limits for it. And this is only for conventional loans. This is not for FHA loans. FHA yeah. loans, it still goes by the county. So if you want to know what the 2023 loan limits are for FHA, you could just simply Google that FHA 23 loan limits in your county name, and then it will come up with the loan limits. So FHA is a little bit different, but this is for conventional. And I, like you said, the multifamilies, I think this is a huge home run. Because everything yeah. has increased over the past couple of years. So now this gives people more buying power in mm-hmm. areas that are not considered high cost states like Georgia, the Carolinas. These are not high cost areas. So this is a no. win, a win for you guys out there. Now, high cost areas, I think this is huge. Now, high cost areas, if we um scroll down. Yeah, I the see high cost, The high cost areas are, are places like California, you know, New York, D.C., you know, just to give you guys an example, yeah. and now this is a huge freaking home run because a single family home now, Fannie Mae, will go up to a million eighty nine. And now also in a high cost area for FHA, mm-hmm. it will it will probably match it. But again, we gotta get wait for that information is released, but they'll probably match in the high cost areas. But this is huge. I can see someone, that. someone can buy a one point one, one point fifty um home. And put down five percent to get over a million. That's incredible. Dollars. That's insane. You know, insane. one thing about those high cost states. When I talk to other agents, I I, I be in awe. They send me these listings. I'm like, oh yes, yeah, a one point five million dollar listing. Let me see it. And I'm like, oh, twelve hundred square feet. <laughs> is that what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> this one, oh oh, this is what you're trying to sell. Oh no wonder they're moving to Georgia. But um, quite honestly, if people love where they love and you love to live in your city. So this is really good for places like New York, Massachusetts, Colorado and California. You know, when you're a first time home buyer, the worst thing that can happen is you not be able to afford at least a the type of home or a good home or a decent property that you want. So increasing those loan limits opens the doors for so many future homeowners in those condensed and high cost areas. Hell yeah. I mean, look at the four families. Now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will buy a four family loan up to 2 million, almost 2.1 million. That's absolutely incredible. It's ve- it's, it's definitely needed yes. um, in these areas. But again, when you're talking about these high cost areas, when you get this high in price, the cash flow is not going to be there probably. You know, um, it's, it's probably going to be more of a situation where you supplement your mortgage payment versus mm. cash flowing. So, guys, if you in these price points, in these high cost areas, and you're looking to finance, you know, multifamilies, just make sure you're running your numbers accurately so that way oh, yeah. you can make sure this is a sound investment. But it's still great that uh, Fannie and Freddie conventional mortgages will uh, go up this high, especially for the single family and the duplexes. Like in New York, that's like the bare oh, yeah. minimum. Like so, this was needed. This is dope. Yeah, absolutely. That that's that's a that was a good call. We need we needed some reprieve from the high interest rates and the high um, cost. So this really helps us out. Nah, this definitely helps us out a lot, and it also gives um, more buying power for people who can qualify um, yeah. for these these higher loan amounts, and it keeps less. Uh, it keeps more money in their pocket. It gives you yeah. the ability now to really use OPM. And this yeah. just goes to show you, right, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac or the FHFA would not be increasing the loan limits if they did not think home prices were going to still appreciate, right? <laughs> and, yes, a lot of this data is based on, and these decisions are made off of the trends early in the year before they make these decisions, but they know that 2023, even if it's modest appreciation, it's still appreciation, so Agreed. these things happen to kind of balance out the two. And with interest rates going down, which I'm hoping they continue to go down if inflation goes down, you know, this is going to be right on time. Right. Oh, on time. I agree. I agree. And, 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 you know, we always everyone wants everything to go down. But unfortunately, we're just in a world where everything must go. Everything is going up. The cost of living is higher. Um, and we're going to continue to see home prices rise throughout the United States. So this is going to help you guys for your first time home buyers to get homes that you feel are desirable for you in a price point that you can feel, that you are, can afford and that you feel comfortable with. Agreed. Agreed. So let's move on to the next thing that we, um, we thought was interesting. 
Um, we're talking about the oh, ten yeah. the ten most affordable cities, correct? Yes, the ten most affordable cities. And I thought this was such an interesting read. Um, but I, I have to say this. It's not Atlanta. <laughs> it's definitely not and it's definitely not New York. <laughs> okay, Atlanta's not on the list. I hate to burst your bubble. But I do think it's great for you guys to know where it is, where can you spend your dollars with so many people migrating to other cities? Where can you go and enjoy your living and also get an affordable home? Want to run down the list? Yeah, let's run down the list. Let's put it on the screen for the people to see, too. All right. So this was right. um, on Forbes.com, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we'll put the link in the description as well. So coming number one on the list is Detroit. Absolutely. Detroit. And what I like about this, and we're definitely going to put this in the description for you guys to kind of read this, too, because it breaks down like the medium salary, um, medium home listing in 2020 was 59000 which is crazy. It breaks yeah. down the taxes and it gives a little bit of information for each city. Right. So we're not going to really go through yeah. um, all the information. We're just going to read out what the 10 names are. So number one was Detroit. Number, Number two, two is our favorite, Cleveland, Ohio. Shout out to Beyond. Wayne. Shout out to Beyond. <laughs> All right. Immediately and we, thought of him. We got uh, number three, uh, Toledo, Ohio. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, number four number is four. Memphis, T Memphis, Tennessee. Hmm. I'm shocked to see this. Number five is Baltimore, Maryland. But okay. Yeah, be That's more. Good. Be more, you, you can get some cheap homes. And these homes, guys, this can be in your investing list, too. So so take note on yeah. this, too. Um, six is Rochester, New York. Is Rochester near Manhattan? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, every New York is down laughing right now. <laughs> is, that, is, it like, is it like within like car distance? To oh, hell no. Rochester is like Buffalo. Oh, Rochester. Not Where is Rochester? Is that like Buffalo, coast of Buffalo? Like Albany? It's, it's, it's a three hour flight. Yeah, that ain't no car. It's a, a three hour flight. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So that joint near Canada, Canada, I think. Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Number eight is Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> Number yeah. nine is Buffalo, New York. So right Buffalo, next to Ro York. right next to Rochester. <laughs> it's not so that's not Manhattan. Okay, got definitely it. not. And then number ten is Kansas City, Kansas. Oh, so these man. are this is a great list, and it's an amazing list. And one thing about this list, you guys can use it to invest, but they also have an affordable city that they like to call like an honorable mention at the bottom. Some honorable mentions, and the reason I have to talk about it is because, of course, my hometown is on this list. Mm -hmm. So some mm -hmm. cities that are affordable that are some honorable mentions are Des, Mo Des Moines, Iowa. Number two is Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, stand Shout up. Shout out to Fayette, nah. my my home, My hometown. Um, Laredo, Texas. Fort Wayne, Indiana. St. Louis, Missouri. Fort Worth, Texas. Indianapolis, Indiana. Shout out to Tiffany to um, Tiffany Latoy. Um, Shout out to Tiff. herself. Yeah. Um, Jacksonville, Florida, Wichita, Kansas, and Columbus, Ohio. So these are some great, this is a great list that you guys want to monitor, especially if you're looking to invest out of state or if you're looking to migrate and move to another city that may be more affordable, this could be your answer. Yeah, I mean, all of these cities, man. So they, they, this article, you know, and we got to do a deep dive on this article in your own time, and so am I, because it gives a lot of information on here. But, I mean, it's, they give you 20 cities. 20 yeah. cities, it breaks down the stats, and it's a great way to go out here and invest. So if it's you are a realtor in these cities, please identify yourself in the comments. Yes. Um, please identify yourself so people can know who you are. Tell us about the investment opportunities in the comments if you are in it, if you're a real estate professional, whether you're a realtor, if you're a lender. Wholesaler. Um, a wholesaler in these cities, especially if you're a wholesaler. You know, we need to get some deals. Your contractor in, in these cities, you know, we want to build our team. So let us know. And let us know if this information is accurate or not um, that's in this article because we're not from these cities. We don't know. We're just I telling you what the you. news is telling us. I know people that live in two cities over here, actually three. 
And they love they love living there because they all work remotely, so they they do most of their business online. Mm -hmm. But the cost of living is so low, they're beyond um, living well in those cities. <laughs> um, so I think that that's a beautiful thing, and we have to start because Tiff live in Indiana, right? Yeah, she love it out there, huh? Love it. She oh lives yeah, in life. cheap as hell. She getting to it. <laughs> properties. She out there living her best life. <laughs> And she fly wherever she wants to when she feel like it. But, um, and I was like, why would you leave? Was her family's there? But on top of that, it's like the cost of living is, is, uh, is incredible. So you think about that business model. If you could, you know, you work remotely. So you have an online business. You can really live anywhere. We have to start restricting ourselves. You can live anywhere you choose. And if you choose to live somewhere with the low cost of living, you know. Yeah. The but, limit. but also look at. All of these places, right? And I was kind of perusing through through this list. If you look at the medium home price, um, you know, one hundred ninety one thousand in BMO. That's relatively inexpensive compared to you know the rest of the country. You got um in Memphis one hundred and twenty three thousand. You can you can find some good deals, and especially you know, I mean Toledo ninety five thousand medium home price. Like, I mean, the medium salaries kind of go with. You know, you got to be careful yes. too. You got to look at that as well when you invest in. Um, yeah. So it's very important wherever you're looking to invest, do your due diligence. But if you're looking, if you're a person who's stuck in a high cost area like New York, DC, LA, and you're looking for a change for your family, like your job can transfer or whatever the case may be, you might want to look into these cities, right? Because if you can't I afford agree. to, I'd rather, like you said, Tiffany's living like the queen in Indianapolis. She's getting to a bag and she's living very, modestly um or it's affordable even probably she got a big ass house but it's probably still relatively cheap compared to these cities like Correct. we live in so look at I, don't discount don't discount I say all this to say don't discount um uh, moving so you can have a better life absolutely because i mean I, I think that we have to also recognize i was listening to an article I was reading an article from Howard Stern and he was talking about how he feels that Oprah flaunts her wealth on Instagram. But I just think she shows her garden and she shows her life. She's not flaunting her wealth. She's showing her life. But then he started to write about the, the differences, how we have to be a little more sensitive and the differences in that wealth gap is getting wider and wider across the United States. Right. So when you think about that, you know, we the cost of living, your living, your housing is your most expensive bill. So if you can go somewhere to reduce that amount, but still keep your quality of living, I would advise you to do so because I don't think as many as much as we would like to think so. I don't think the government or anybody else, any of these affordable housing programs are going to be able to stop what is happening in a lot of these major metropolitan cities when it comes to the growth, when it comes to the private and public sectors coming together to do expansions and developments. So you have to look out for yourself. Nah, you have to. And I don't think she's floating her wealth at all. You know Neither. what I'm saying? Like, she's, she's in the garden. A, she's in her garden. Her wealth when you're in the garden. Like, she's not at Chanel's store. She's literally in the garden. I'm inspired every day because I'm like, I need to get a garden. It looks like peace to me. When yeah. I look at her page, I see peace. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how she's floating her wealth. But, no, you know. that's just, uh, but that's how I feel. I feel like certain people of, of, of other races, when they see especially black people living well, then it's all of a sudden it's flying their wealth. She's a billionaire and she's one of the one black female billionaire. Let her get her cabbage from her garden and cook it and show us how they chop it up. Okay. She's, she's well deserving <laughs> of that. She well, deserves it. <laughs> well, well, well deserving of, you know, being in her garden every day. Hell, I want to exactly. be in my garden every day too. Exactly. Like that's what you work so hard for. But, but you're, you know, you're right though. The wealth gap is, is, widening um it is. it's absolutely getting ridiculous and i do think you have definitely have to be careful about how you present yourself to the world because the streets are always watching um, agree and you always have to you know be a certain way but again if you guys are having problems you know especially financially in one of these high cost areas look into these areas that we just mentioned i believe that i think that that would be the answer because i told you i I have a whole article I read about Atlanta and I don't want to get Atlanta condensed, but when you start really looking at these plans and really understanding how development works, they've planned this. This was planned 20 years ago. Absolutely. Every development, every growth you see in any 
major city was already planned to happen. And uh, when you have private sector in, um, investors coming in, they're going to invest. And when they do that and they're buying all the homes, we know that's happening. What can you do to ensure that you and your family are, 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 are good, you're safe, that you feel comfortable about your living situation? You may want to move because you're not a, you can go anywhere you choose to go, especially if you can find an opportunity there. And I think this is something that we should start looking into because these major cities, Atlanta, Miami, Houston, um, New York, California, Arizona, the cost of living is just extremely high and the wealth gap is getting wider and it's not stopping. No, nah, it's definitely not. It's definitely not. All right, so let's move on. We had something else good we were going to discuss. We we're going to talk about the mortgage rates, right? <clears throat> mortgage. Shout mortgage. out to the m mortgages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the mortgage applications. Are, are, have, are have, back. Uh, yes. They're back. So basically what's going on, the, the borrowers are back in town, baby. Borrowers said we are ready to come back. We are ready to buy houses. Thank God. All right, mortgage applications are on the rise as interest rates fall and homebuyers get back in the game. Your head is in the game, we love to see it. So for months, the mortgage rates rose with no end in sight, but now the potential home buyer, the potential home buyer started to back off, but now the reverse is happening. Um, the average 30 year fixed rate fell below 7% to 6.67%. And now that's down almost 50 basis points from the peak of 7.16% a month ago. So what we're seeing is the volume of mortgage applications have increased 2.2% on a seasonally, seasonally adjusted basis from one week earlier. So this is great news. This is telling us that people are getting comfortable with the current rates in the current state of the economy. But beyond that, they're also understanding that as rates increase, you know what is also increasing? The cost of homes and the cost of renting. So waiting is not really to your benefit and finding a good sweet spot in these rates are really beneficial to everyone that's involved. Um, so what do you think about that, Matt? So since the inflation data came out two weeks ago, that um made mortgage rates do a u-turn and go yes. back the opposite way and it just goes to show you that the mortgage rate market is so volatile that it's very hard to time these things you have to be in position already to mm -hmm. lock in to take advantage of, of this stuff when those opportunities come because just as quickly as rates turned around and went back down you know 50 basis points and it's been flat like that for the past two weeks um, yeah i can guarantee you that this thing will probably go up much faster than it goes down lower so if you are in the market of purchasing a property right now is definitely a good time to lock in yes. i was i would i would i would tell you to be cautious about floating your interest rate um, in this market because one bad news comes out and we come, we're going into December. So now November's data is going to start coming out within the next two weeks. And that could cause volatility in the mortgage market where you have a new jobs report, you have another inflation report, you have a Fed's meeting coming up. And let's hope this inflation report is lower it went down to 7.7 percent let's hope it continues the trend of going lower because if it does that can send interest rates down a little bit further lower and let's yeah. hope if it does come in lower now the feds don't go crazy at the next fed meeting and raise rates 75 basis points again if they do raise let's hope it's a quarter to a half or less um but let's hope it's not 75 basis points again but I, I think, um, again, lock in if you have a contract right now, if you are in underwriting right now, lock in your rates. Don't um, put yourself in a position because you're playing the market, trying to save a quarter of a point here or even a half a point here. It might not be worth it because it, just as quick as it goes down, it can go up much faster. So that's my thoughts on on this but i love it i love it like kiana said but, if, but if, we all but we have to be you have to tell them the truth though i think that that's a good 
um, analysis because so often we think, oh, we have more time. When the rates were 2.75%, everybody thought they had more time. Then they were 3%, they thought they had more time. Then four, then five, then six. Now we're at seven and you, everybody's backing away. So now we're getting a reduction. You have to understand time is always of the essence when you're looking to make a move. So make a decision when it comes to your home buying and follow the trends. Listen to our podcast. Look at the articles that we're sharing with you guys and do your own due diligence. But make smart decisions. No, you definitely got to make smart decisions and listen to the professionals that you, you've hired a part of your team. Um, do your own due diligence. Make sure you're keeping up with the market yourself by watching and listening to rants and gems and following our instagram pages you know kiana watson and mg the mortgage guy because we're talking about the markets on a daily basis on both of our channels just to give you more day-to-day insights but um lock in don't hesitate because again everybody will make you or want you to believe that there's going to be some sort of crash that's going to happen in real estate, which I, I'm on record and I'm going to continue to stay on record of this. I don't see it happening. Yeah. I think home prices are going to continue to go up, but at modest paces. But if it goes up 5% next year, that means it's going to go up from the 12% or the 7% that's going to finish this year, right? It's still going up. And if these rates stay in this 65 to 7.5%, affordability is going to be in question. And a lot of you are going to be boxed out of your dreams. And take advantage of this program, 2-1 Buy Down. We spoke about this a couple of weeks ago Yes. Um, on the show. Take advantage. Like I'm telling you, I'm, I'm locking in the client right now. Um, they're doing the FHA 2-1 Buy Down, mid-600 credit scores. Um, the teaser rate is 4%, right? The, for the first year, the second year, 5%. The third year, 6%, right? It gives them... And it's saving them the first year about $650, $670 a month. So Correct. use that program, the two-on buy down. We've explained it. Go back to, you know, I don't remember what episode that was. But we just, yeah, we explained I think it, it and broke it down. 71 or 72 or one of them. But, you know, use the programs that's available. Negotiate for sales concessions if you can. And use that concession yes. to use that buy down program. Because it's going to save you some money while we trying to wait out this interest rate market. I agree. And then also take advantage of it's so many other programs right now. I see so many grants, so many 100% um, financing, down payment assistance grants. Like people are saying, I wish these grants were available when the rates was 2.75%. That's not quite how the economy works. That is not economics. But now that you have opportunities to get help with your out-of-pocket expenses and your rate buy-downs and you know, when I was thinking about it, and this is not a plug, but this is just something that me and all of our realtors we talk about. You guys were ready to pay fifty and sixty thousand above asking price when the rates were at three percent. But now that we can negotiate fifty thousand off the asking price, and you have an interest rate that you can always change, it can it can adjust. You're afraid to make a move. And it is extremely disturbing if you think about it. Because when you buy, a, whatever you buy, you lock in at that purchase price. So whatever you, if, even if you last year paid 50000 above asking, that is the price. So right now, if you get a really good price and you get an interest rate you may not love, and let's say God given the rate start to float down in a year or two, you have an opportunity to refinance. And when you do that, you're saving yourself on the long time of the of the actual mortgage because most mortgages are 30 years. You guys are thinking so short term, most mortgages are 30 years. It's very rare that a person does a 15 year mortgage, but at the very least it's 15, you're still not doing a two year mortgage. Yeah, so, no, hundred percent. You know, Let if me you ask think you this. about it. You said something interesting just now. Right. So with your buyers, what um like how are you guys putting in your offers now? Right. Oh, because different. because I I know, you know, probably six months ago, eight months ago, you couldn't get away with what you're getting away with now, correct? Absolutely not. Um six months ago we couldn't breathe a seller's concession. As a matter of fact, we had multiple we, as a matter of fact, six months ago we had multiple offers. And if you paying above asking price was the standard for those top rated school district and those specific properties. Now we're able to negotiate not just money off the asking price, but also sellers concessions, 
um, rate buy down. So a seller concession is, is let's say your closing costs, they'll, they'll give you money towards your closing costs. We're able to negotiate repairs because they weren't repairing anything at one point. Um, we are able to get money off the sales price, seller's concession, and get you some repairs. So this is a really good time to come in if you're ready and you're motivated to purchase and you have a good negotiating real estate professional on your side so you can lock in at a really good price and then you know do a rate buy down or reconsider your rates when rates eventually go down in a couple of years but i do see some major concessions being done uh, we had seven thousand six hundred and eighty price reductions in the last seven days in the metro atlanta area wait so, hold on you have 7600 yes. price reductions in the last week alone yeah. in atlanta mm -hmm. that's crazy i look at the report every day and so how many the, homes are in the market i gotta pull that most recent report but the one that i looked at last week we had a little over I want to say a little over 60,000. So we don't have that many homes on the market. So like 10% of the market, a little bit over 10% yep. of the market reduced their yes, price. Yes. And even though when we, our most recent report came out, we still have only two months of inventory. So it's still a seller's market per se, but a seller that is motivated, once they put their home on the market, they, they want to sell. And if you are looking to purchase, like right now, what I like about this market is flooded out anyone that just wants to play around. If you're ready to purchase, they're purchasing. If they're ready to sell, they're doing what it takes to sell. So it's becoming more of a win-win for both parties instead of just leaning towards the sellers in such a way where it was very much so unfair to the buyer. So, um, and that's me speaking for the Atlanta market, but I talk to agents throughout the United States. And this is also a reflection of what I know is happening in California, Florida, um, North Carolina, parts of New Jersey. All of these agents are in my um, training courses. So they tell me and I know what's going on. So no matter where you are, get you a really good real estate professional, because if you want to negotiate now, you have some power because I can tell you six months ago, we had nothing. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you're starting to see the sellers getting a little bit more realistic with everything from yes. concessions to pricing and it seems like a lot of sellers are dropping the price much faster than what they were a couple years ago like if that thing is on the market a week it seems like i'm seeing price a price reduction right just away keep in mind, if you have your house on the market around the holidays and especially if you just put it on the market you obviously want to sell and i think that we're forgetting that sellers want to sell their properties and they have other things that they're moving on to whether it be another property up upside upsizing downsizing and the motivation to sell is there because they see the shift in the market too they see buyers are afraid to purchase because of just some just because of the fear of the unknown so this is a good opportunity for buyers that are educated that understand the it's common this laws of economics, how it's still a great investment to purchase to get a good deal and for sellers to still sell their properties without, they're not throwing in the kitchen sink, but you do have to be realistic because buyers are not going to come in and just buy your properties, especially with them. They listen to the same articles we, we listen to. They are hearing all of the same things we hear on the radio and on the news. Everybody is in a very sensitive place when it comes to the housing market. So we have to come together and provide real information and sellers and buyers need to lean a little bit to meet each other in the middle. Agreed. Agreed. And I think with the rates going down, it's going to bring a lot more buyers back into the fold. Um, if these rates touch 5% at some point in the next 60 days, I think this winter is going to be very busy. It will uh, be. And it helps so many transactions. people. Um, I was doing a calculation the other day. If you're paying twenty five hundred dollars a month in rent, that's thirty thousand a year. That's a salary, and you're not getting that back. That's not. You're never going to be able to do anything with that. That's going directly to the landlord. But imagine if you did that same amount towards your mortgage. A huge portion of that will go towards your principal. And as you pay towards your principal, that money is not spent in vain. Now you're inside of an income producing asset. You know, real estate is not a vehicle that's supposed to be a cash cow. It is for the long term. So you should think about investing in real estate for the long term wins and the long term gains. So most people don't break it down to that number. But if you think about it, it's like you are wasting money and rents are, I mean, they are so high. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The rental game is not slowing down. Um, although the reports will tell you it's slowing down. 
Um, but it's still over two thousand a month for like a one bedroom apartment, which is um absolutely crazy. But again, that that gives opportunity for those who are buying multi multi families or are investing in real estate, and that's what I really want our people for twenty twenty three to really like focus on. Like we got to become more investors because it's cool to buy your own primary house, but you got to have a game plan. Like how do you how do you accomplish both of them? Like if you're somebody if you're a first time home buyer. Like, you got to be thinking, like, not only can I buy, like, my first house, how can I buy my first investment property all in the same year? Because it's doable in most cases. I think if, you, if most people kind of, like, lower their expectations on their primary and kind of you say, hey, instead of me getting an $800,000 house, why don't I get the $600,000 house, right? And I get that to live in, and now I have more change left over when I can go buy in one of these 10 cities that's affordable, a yeah. hundred thousand dollar investment property or a hundred and fifty thousand dollar um um investment property because now if you pre approve up to eight hundred thousand if you really split up your pre approval you can accomplish a lot with that and I don't think people look at that I think they just try to max out as much as they can on their pre approvals and trying to just buy one property versus trying to say you know what if, if I can use this six seven hundred thousand. Maybe I could just go buy three investment properties instead of go buy my primary right now. So that way, like you said, the vent, the rent that you're paying is not going in vain because you're still right. owning. So if you're going to still rent, cool, but you had to have an exit strategy. And that oh. exit strategy could be, hey, let me just go get pre-approved and let me go buy three or four investment properties because I might have 50000 or 100000 saved. That can go mm -hmm. a long way in these 10 cities we discussed. It can, and people don't, you know, and I think that we just get overwhelmed with what do I, what can I get? What should I get? Uh, what if someone doesn't pay the rent? Well, what if they do? You know, <laughs> what, if they do? what if they do? What, who would have thunk it? I just stop, um, like tricking ourselves out of our spot and thinking of everything that could go wrong and start really focusing on what could actually go right. And when you buy right in the right area and you get at least one or two investment, at least one investment property, let's just start with one. Remember at the top of the year, we did the building blocks. We did the building blocks to, to you know, buying your first home, buying your second home. Go back and listen to those episodes and make sure you educate yourself on the fact that getting an investment property is not, it's not that hard. I have investment properties. It, I don't lose sleep over them. No, I don't lose you know, sleep over none of my lose, properties. I don't, you, you don't lose sleep over them. You, you have them. You rent them out and you go about your day and you and you spend responsibly and you make and you put together a contingency plan and the account to cover the the mortgage there in the event the person doesn't pay. But you vet your you vet your people, you vet your renters, and you move on. And that's how you can continue to build wealth. And I want us to get back to that diversification. You know, we always say it's going to be real estate in stocks. We see what's going on with stocks. You got to do all of it, you know, to really create your long term wealth plan. I think that with real estate, you want to start thinking forever, like not, you know, like like Jay-Z say, I don't want to be a trend. I want to be Ralph Lauren. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 I want to be I want to think forever. Talk we that shit, forever. Kiana. <laughs> <laughs> Drop them bars, Kiana. <laughs> <laughs> Go no, off. Let's start thinking forever, and we'll nah. we'll make more. We'll we'll do better as people. I agree with that. Real estate is forever. It's always a good time to buy real estate. Um, but we gave you all some good information today. Hopefully, um, you guys found this information useful. I think the loan limits increasing is a home run. Interest rates going down is a home run. We've been speaking a lot of doom and gloom lately on Rants and Gems, so we had to give y'all some positive news. Yes. Because you guys just be looking for the doom and gloom and everything, and we're very optimistic over here at Rants and Gems. We're never going to have a pessimistic mindset. We're always going to think of um, ways to find something out of nothing, and that's what you have to do as an investor, as a creative. You got to make, you got to turn water into wine. You got to figure Agreed. it out because in every market, no matter what cycle that we're in, in in the real estate market over the next 10 years, 20 years, there's always going to be an opportunity to make money in it, no matter what. Because it doesn't matter if the prices are going low, I can still go outside and touch my property. It doesn't matter. The tenants are still going to pay me. It doesn't matter what the hell's really happening. So we need you guys to invest. We, we urge you guys to invest. 
We urge you guys, don't let the fear mongering stop you. And mm -hmm. yes, we are licensed professionals too <laughs> at the same time. Yes. <laughs> and this is not us being biased because we are licensed professionals. We're just giving you the facts of life and we always preach and promote, be smart about your investing and your home buying decisions. Don't make stupid decisions. Don't follow the trends. Don't be emotional. Be smart. And we're going to continue to preach ownership in our community, whether you like it or not. Agreed. Period Agreed. with a T. Period, point blank. We we can't find it. There's no other way to, to, to do it because we see the freedom. I don't know about you guys, but I I, I want I, I like the the feeling of feeling free and knowing that I've made smart investments and made smart decisions. I don't have to do anything I don't want to do, and um, that comes with your businesses. That comes with you investing in businesses, investing in yourself, investing in real estate, having a diverse portfolio, and monitoring your time. You know we have to start thinking long term. Um, real estate is not going to be. Some cities are. Some cities are like that. Like. Atlanta, shameless plug, we are that city. You can probably, you, there are people that are making 100000 on an investment they purchased last year. Um, we're one of those appreciating cities. But every city doesn't move like that, but you still have the long term. Because that's what you're here for, the long term. Yeah, and if your city don't have it, find one that does. <laughs> we got <laughs> you know it. Saying? Find one that does and then, you know, make love to it and get what you got to get out of it, get right? You got to get out of it. Get what you got to get out of it. So, look, I thought this was a, a good show. Um, I'm full. Me too. I, I don't I don't really need to discuss any more about this. Now we can lead y'all to the water. Now it's time for y'all to drink. So y'all go out there. and um, But make sure you go buy the books, though. We got House Hackonomics. Go to mgbookstore.com, and then go get the Clear to Close book. Go to cleartoclosebook.com. Yeah, cleartoclosethebook.com. Look, and what about your new book? You got something else coming out. So we got the new book, The Real Estate Investors Manifesto, dropping December 9th, I believe it is. Pre-sale is all going on right now. So, again, mgbookstore.com to pick up the pre-sale of that book and pick up House Hackonomics um, while you're at it. And pick up all the bundles. You know, just go shop. Live your best life. <laughs> Live your best life. Get the bundles. Invest. And, so and, what and, you got going on in December, Kiana? Are you making any special appearances anywhere where the people could come see you? Not that I can think of. Not in December. Um, kind of cleared my calendar out for December. My husband's birthday is coming up. Christmas coming up. Um, I'll probably be out the way for December unless something miraculous happens. Um, right now, my online training um, academy, though, we are back in full effect. So um, our membership doors will close at the end of December. So if you guys want to get on get in on that, you definitely want to come. All the reviews are on the Agents Who's for Success page. You know, not to brag, but humbly speaking, my people are doubling their GCI by being a part of our private training group. Um, the reviews are there. These are real people, real comments. So um, definitely join us. It's going to be a vibe, the ATFS squad. And um, we will be having special events just for Agents Who's for Success. So I'm excited to revamp and relaunch my membership just for real estate professionals. Look, I love it. I love it. MG Mortgage Academy will be back out for real estate professionals so we can learn to fund it and finance it. In. But to be determined on that. But, yeah, that's all we got. Oh, if y'all want to advertise with Rants and Gems, always remember to email Jordana at RantsandGems.com. Jordana at RantsandGems.com. But I'm out of here. Peace all right. out to all of y'all. I love y'all. Make sure y'all like, comment, share, subscribe this video, share it with 10 people, then go to audio, download it, Rants and Gems, leave a review, um, and share it with 20 people on audio. All right? Please. <laughs> My so name is Kiana. I'll go. I'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> My name is Kiana Watson, um, broker extraordinaire. I'm license number three one seven five seven six. <laughs> All right, this is Matt Garland, NMLS number five eight seven zero zero, better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>